Miles from the Looney Tunes, and you're watching the Creepy Comma Show. Good to see you. You too. I Me miss too. you. I miss you really a lot. Okay, we're gonna get right into it here. Right into it. Let's see here. Um, well, we met a long time ago through Blasco, and back then you were playing guitar for a, a Man and the Murder Dolls. Am I right? Almost. Yeah. Almost. I was playing guitar for A Man. Okay. And after A Man, I played with Wednesday Thirteen, who was the singer of the Murder Dolls. Got gotcha. you. It was us. It, yeah. Basically, we, we were playing Murder Dolls songs, so it might as well have. I don't you get started with Amen. Amen was my favorite band, um, and I had like Amen tattoos and my favorite lyrics. Um, and I met the guys in passing. Like I was, I was a, I was a, uh, a tech for Tommy Victor from Prom. Oh yeah. And Tommy uh, was opening for, Prom was opening for Danzig. Okay. And I was Tom, I was Prom's drum tech. Bass tech, guitar tech, and I drove the van. Damn. And How many hats did you have to wear? Seven? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I sold merch, too. God damn. Um, so throughout the course of this tour they, it, with Danzig, um, they, the last show was here. It was in L.A., and uh, the Amen guys showed up. And um, Tommy was like, hey, that band you likes here. Go say hi to him. So I went out there, and uh, Tommy was like, if you guys ever need a, need a guitar player or a guitar tech, this is your guy. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, if you guys are going on a tour and need a guitar tech, let me know. I, you know, uh, I'll be happy to help out. A couple weeks later, Prong was in Europe, and Amen was in Europe, and uh, we hung out. And um, I went to see them at the Underworld or something they played. And uh, I got to know Casey a little bit. And then in case you see the name, the singer. Amen. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, two months later, I was living in Boston at the time. Two months later, I just got a phone call out of the blue, and it was the guitar player, and he said, "Hey, man, if you want to join the band and move to LA, you totally can. It's cool. I was like, <laughs> it's cool if you can." I, I was like, "Okay, I'll leave right now." Yeah. So I got a U-Haul and. That's it. Wow, that's super cool. I've, I've kind of been here ever since, with the exception of a few times I've tried to leave and it hasn't worked out. <laughs> it's strange how Los Angeles pulls you back. It, it is. It's weird. It's, I don't know how to describe it. It's a vortex. Or, a, or like a quicksand. A quicksand. <laughs> what kind of furry friends do you have? Give me some names. If they could talk, what kind of personalities would you say they have? <laughs> uh, I've got a black cat um, named Salem. And I had her since she was a kitten, and uh, yeah, she's just turned seventeen. Now. Oh wow! Yeah, so she's she and she's lived with me in five states, and I mean, wow. yeah, she's an old lady now. Yeah, huh? she's an old lady. She's bounced around a lot. <laughs> um, she's resilient. Yeah, I think it, I think if she I think if she could say anything, she'd probably. I don't know what she'd say. I think she'd probably say, "Are we here for a while?" That makes sense. Yeah. 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 And she probably said, I miss you. Could you stick around a little bit? Can longer? I unpack? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Is that the only pet you guys have? No. Uh, we have. Uh, we just got a dog last summer named Shia, a black cocker spaniel, who was a rescue. And um, she's amazing. She's highly intelligent um, and fiercely codependent. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I would think that if she had anything to... Sh to say, she'd probably say, where are you going? Totally. And can I go? Can I go? <laughs> am I invited? Yeah, am I invited? Uh, what were the circumstances behind the nickname Piggy D? Um, there's a company here in LA called Junker Clothing. Todd. Todd. I've known Todd forever. Yeah. I've known Todd since I was 17. Really? Yeah. Todd. From, from being in Texas? Mm-hmm. Todd. Were you in Houston? Yeah. Oh. Todd named me Piggy. Todd had a band called Spunk. Okay, yeah, we'll get into that later. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I was in high school, and their drummer 
worked at a music store with my brother. Uh, and David, uh, the drummer, called me and he's like, hey, we need a guitar player. Can you, when you get out of school, can you like come audition? <laughs> so, for Spunk? For Spunk, so oh, I did. No kidding. And then we started, uh, we started playing shows. I think my first show was with them in Dallas the day Kurt Cobain died. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, and I fell asleep in the van on the way to the gig. And uh, I had my shirt off. It was so hot, I remember. And I woke up, and they had sharpied the burly piglet. Or they wrote piglet on my chest. <laughs> on the kick drums, they had painted the burly spunk Texas, the burly pig, the burly pig rock. Okay. So they called me the burly piglet. For, Todd did for some weird reason, and it just stuck. Really? Two after even two bands after spunk. Uh, the name I was it was Piggy. Really? Yeah. For okay. some reason, there was a lot of mats in my circle, and it, it, we knew a lot of mats or so. I don't know. It just I couldn't get rid of it. Yeah. And um, but that's so. Uh, that's that's all, interesting. It's actually all Todd's fault. Wow, uh, and that's funny because who's, uh, who's an amazing guy by the way? Yeah, no, he's, Todd, a, he's an yeah, amazing well, artist. Well, say I like Todd. I like Todd yeah. a lot. He's really cool. We reconnected recently, and um, the reason I know him is that uh, when I was in the Living End, I, I booked a full tour for us, and we we went all over the Texas and United yeah. States with with uh, Spawn. Oh, so then it just came. So then, where did the D come from? Oh, the band, the drummer and I, um, after Spunk, we formed another band called the She Demons, which okay. was like an art rock, pop, avant-garde, metal fusion thing. But we, we were all drag queens from outer space. Dope. Unbeknownst to me, there was another band in North Carolina called the Frankenstein Drag Queens that was forming with Wednesday. Yes, I remember that. Which is weird. That. It's that like is... six degrees of like drag queens. Or Kevin Bacon. Like Kevin Bacon yeah. and drag queens. Yeah. Kevin Bacon <laughs> and drag. So anyway, so that's what, and so the D She Demons became kind of like the Ramones, so where we all took the last name Demon. Oh, that's gotcha. That's where the D came from. Okay. Another stupid idea <laughs> that, I, that I'm now dealing with when I'm 40. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's funny, so, man. Yeah. Okay, and did that have any? This is off off the page too, but did that have any influence on the um, the crazy like bat ish kind of mask thing that you wear periodically in the in the RZ deal? That's the funny thing. A, a Spunk was one of the only bands I was ever in where I didn't wear makeup or a costume. Every, okay. In Amen, Amen was a, a, a punk band, but yeah. Everything I've done since I was a kid, pretty much, was some kind of a theatrical thing. It was mask or makeup or a cape or something involved. And was that based out of like <laughs> Alice Cooper and Kiss and stuff like that? And, or was it yeah. And Halloween, basically? And Scooby Doo villains. And, yeah, and Scooby Doo, like you meddling kids. Yeah, gotcha. totally. I loved Scooby Doo and I loved the musicals. Right. I could, I could sing every song from Fiddler on the Roof. Whoa, that's cool. Like the back of my hand. Well, for we don't have enough time time. for this today, but... Oh, like, yes, we do. To... <laughs> <laughs> if I was a rich man. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> uh, Tim Burton films, we're both a fan of them. Yep. What, uh, what kind of characters and, and what films and characters in those films can you more closely relate to? Ed Wood is my favorite, not only my favorite Tim Burton film, but my favorite movie ever. Okay. Of all time. There's so much passion in that movie about what Ed was trying to do. And about how all how important all of those people were to him. You get the feeling from that movie, whether it was reality or not, that that uh, when you want to accomplish something, if you surround yourself with the right people, you could pretty much do anything. What would you recommend to people to read that might be good um, for them? And or if you're reading something now, what what is it? I'm currently reading the Afterlife of Billy Fingers. Um, I've started. I do yoga, and I meditate, and I, I read, I read books on that stuff. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I've been interested in is what, is what possibly happens to us after we die. Mm -hmm. So I've been kind of reading about the different probabilities of that. Um, it's just interesting to me, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and that book has a lot of insight in it too, you know, depending on what what you want to take from it. So we met through Blasco. Um, he was the former bass player of uh, Rob Zombie. So how did that changeover occur? What was the audition like? And um, how did it feel to switch up from primarily playing guitar to being the bass master that you are? Oh man, that, that's a long, crazy story. So I'll paraphrase it. Okay, great. Yeah. All right. No, I'll tell the whole story. That's right. Well, no, we, have, we still have to do the filler. I hope you thing. have four hours. Um, <laughs> 
No, this, the, the paraphrase version of the story is Blasco uh, decided to make a career change and join Ozzy's band and called me and asked me if I wanted to play bass. Had you played bass much prior? Nope. No, not at all. No, but I, was, I mean, you're a good guitar player, so it wasn't too much of a switchover. It wasn't too much of a switch. I just had to figure out which, which bass I needed. Right. It took a, it took a minute, you yeah. know? Yeah, I mean, just I, you know, when I first joined the band, I'm like, I'm like, wow, all these different tunings and all these songs. I mean, what, how am I gonna do this? And I started, I just got every single bass I possibly could, and I played all of them, okay, just to see what felt natural to like hold, because I've been holding a guitar for right. like, at that twenty years or something at that point. So I was like, so I, I, you know, I learned guitar by watching Johnny Ramone. Okay. That's how you play guitar. Yeah, you wear it down here and you beat the shit out of it. So I had to find a bass that felt right for me to do that, but I have these little lady fingers and this little frame and, you know, I look weird. I'm holding a tree. It's, just, it's <laughs> awkward. We both grew up watching those Rankin Bass uh, puppet, trippy puppet stop motion animation things that they have every Christmas. Mm -hmm. You did see that stuff oh, growing yeah. up, right? Oh yeah, of course. What was your favorite one? Or was it the Mad Monster Party? Mad Monster Party is a good one. Yeah, that, I mean, that's a classic. Um, you know what, man? You know what was cool about it is, like, you felt when that stuff came on, I don't know if it did this for you, but my local ABC station, which I think is or CBS, whoever played them, mm -hmm. had this special logo okay. that would come on. And it was always, like, the Wednesday before school got out, they would play, like, Rudolph or one of them, or, you mm -hmm. know, one of, the, one of the specials. And you'd see the special logo come on. With like this trippy that. rainbow thing and swirl around, you're like, oh, here it comes, here it comes, and it was always either Charlie Brown or you know, the, in, in uh, Great Pumpkin or, yeah. or one of the or the Rankin and Bass shows. Yeah, but that's just, I mean, those shows to me are, if you guys like us get nostalgic for stuff, mm -hmm. that's to me like the dictionary definition of nostalgia. Absolutely. Like that's the stuff where you see it and it you instantly are a kid, at least for two seconds, and you have that warm, cozy feeling of everything's okay. There's Absolutely. the logo. <laughs> There's Frosty. Totally. The world is at peace. <laughs> Everybody has that moment with those shows, right? You went into the kitchen and got yourself a bowl of Apple Jacks or something. Yeah. Yeah, it. Apple Jacks. Like you you say Apple Jacks, you can smell it. Right? Yeah. That's like a thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that was really crazy. Um, and back then, too, you know, it wasn't, you know, it was television. So, you know, at least for me, when those shows came on, like, I felt like I may never get a chance to see them again. Because, you know, at that point, you didn't know that they were going to come out on DVD or video or right. anything. So it's like, a year. You, you had to be there for that stuff. Yep. If you missed that shit, it was over. Yep. Just like, okay, um, this is off paper, too, yeah. but like Kiss Family in the Park. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I missed that first time it came on. Yeah. Did you see it when it first came on, the very first? Not the first time. No. no. I was too young. I couldn't stay up. Yeah. They wouldn't let me. Yeah. And I thought I was going to kill myself. Yeah, I didn't see it till later. <laughs> really? Yeah, and then I was like, I waited so long for this. Totally, man. It was the worst. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst, but uh, yeah. But we're That's Mexican not fans. Ace. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Yeah, I, yeah. It's very true. When you watch, when you watch Phantom of the Park now, and... Um, you know, I'm sorry because I'm a Kiss fan. And I'm sorry, you guys in Kiss, but it just—it's a shitty movie. But the songs are good. <laughs> They're just ordinary human beings. Yes, yeah, yeah. gotta remember yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> this brought me to. Did you ever have um, KTEL Looney Tunes? Yeah. Um, when they had all those crazy songs, like yeah. the Streak and whatever else on that. Yeah. And now, how about also? How about the very first Haunted Mansion album with like the, the orange and the blue house on the hill? That's an important record to me. Me too. <laughs> Out of the 80s splatter films that <laughs> I, I'm sure you and I both cover, uh, covet, rather, um, what are the standouts to you? I mean, what, what really hits you like as your first thought of that era? Tits. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much what it was. <laughs> yeah, Tits and Blood? Um, tits and Blood. What, uh, what movies really, like, did you, that, you know, really um, attracted you? Uh, I went through a phase where I liked all the all that um, all the Friday the Thirteenth movies and um, Nightmare on Elm Street had a big impact on me. Really? Yeah, the first one the first one scared the piss out of me. 
Yeah, I mean, we were fairly young at that time, so it was, it was, it was a pretty impactful film, I agree. Yeah. Those movies at the time were a cool gateway for, like, chicks, rock and roll, or punk, a bit like Return of the Living Dead was a big one for me. Yeah, for sure. That pretty much defined the next 20 years of my life, I think, that movie. The Absolutely. Type, the type of girls I dated, the bands I was in, the music I listened to, the way I cut my hair. That movie was like the gateway drug for me for like punk rock and tattooed chicks and, and lifestyle. Hanging out in cemeteries. Yeah. And all that stupid shit. Like that, everything that was cool to me was in that movie. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's probably one of the best soundtracks of all time. Oh, yeah. Got that damn song on there is like something you almost can't find. I know. I know. It's amazing. I've bought that soundtrack probably more than any, almost, probably more than almost any other record. Just because I give it away. <laughs> I totally agree with that. Now, let me ask. This is off, off my thing. Um, when you saw the original Halloween, did you see it in the theaters? No. You did on TV. Okay. All right. Did that have an impact on you? Yeah, it did. It did. Um... I remember that movie making me feel like you're not safe. Mm -hmm. And Nightmare on Elm Street, Nightmare, Nightmare on Elm Street, I think was especially frightening for me too because Michael Myers was could get you in the day, could get you in your house. Mm -hmm. Freddy could get you regardless of where you were and if you were asleep or not. <laughs> totally. Michael Myers never said anything; right. he just killed you. Freddy, on the other hand, was a burnt. <laughs> child molester <laughs> with knives on his fingers that totally. killed you in your sleep. So it was kind of like Michael Myers, who I could outrun, yeah, or Freddy. Then there's no chance of getting away from Freddy. No. No, there's no. no there is no way to get away from there's him. There is no way. No, you're fucked. You're just fucked. Right? <laughs> you're you're fucked. fucked when it comes to Freddy, right? Stay haunted. Devil shotgun dance behind the wheel. 